Hey, we are back with some more two sons, and these are slip joints. Uh, I've saved these uh, as a uh, different video because, well, a lot of people who are super into uh, locking blades have absolutely no interest in these. So uh, that's fine. All right, we have the TS58-NL. Uh, this is the non-locking variant of it. This is a Wong design. And, M oh, sorry, it's not. It's a uh, Night Morning. My bad. Uh, M390 blade steel on this one here. And this is uh, a lot like uh, some uh, Japanese traditional knives. But, um, you know, we have this uh, thing that extends way far back here. Uh, rather than just have the uh, the pad up there for the uh, friction folder on there. Kind of uh, interesting design. This one uh, does not have um, uh, ceramic bearings uh, in there, even though you would kind of think that it would. Um, I am not sure about the locking variant of this, because there is a frame lock version of this, and whether or not that has bearings on it. But I kind of doubt it, since they would probably just make it about the same, just have a liner that, or a, yeah, a frame that would lock on there. So there's that guy. We have the TS-90. Well, this is the TS-90-CF, I suppose, as they call it now. This is a night morning design in, there we go, M390. And uh, this is quite a large folder overall. Um... This is uh, below 100 in the model names, so they really were doing a bit thicker grinds back then. So uh, keep that in mind. This thing uh, does have a fairly thick blade stock on it, but still very, very nice and comfortable in the hand. And um, the uh, spring tension on this thing is absolutely fantastic. Probably somewhere around 8 to 8.5, somewhere around there. You know, not something super dangerous, but uh, very secure. Next up, we have the TS-123, and I love this damn thing. We got a matchstick pole on here. We got a very traditional clip pointish kind of thing going on here. This is a Wong design. It's an uh, M390. It's not incredibly exemplary example of M390. It's a little soft in general, but um, it's easy enough to maintain with uh, stropping it up when uh, you do need to do that. Uh, this also has a pocket clip on there, which, hey, you don't see that on a whole lot of slip joints. And it works great. It doesn't really seem to uh, add any hot spots or anything like that. And nice and thin blade stock, which you don't see on a lot of these, unfortunately. This, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite designs that they've done. This is copper. Uh, you have seen, you can probably see that this is patinaed quite a bit, because, well, I've used it quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, next up we have the uh, TS-126. And we might need a microscope for this guy. <laughs> it's... Very, very tiny. This is a night morning design. And M390. This is basically a two finger knife. A uh, little bit taller blade, but uh, I think about the same length as a uh, Swiss Army Classic. But uh, exposed back spring on there. Kind of interesting. And blackened titanium going on there. Very nice half stop. This was an M390, if I didn't mention that before. Just couldn't remember. All right, next up, TS-161. This is in bone, and it has titanium liners. I've uh, anodized those. We have a uh, hole through uh, for the blade pull on this one. And this is uh, fairly thick in the blade stock. This is a Ho Yu Dong uh, design. It's an M390. The M390 does a pretty darn good job on this particular example, so that's nice. And uh, the spring does take quite a bit before it would uh, break on you, but almost none of these really do have any protection for when it can 
Yeah, that'll just uh, get right up into your fingers and uh, all that sort of stuff. But pretty nice walk and talk and uh, back spring strength on that one. All right, next up, TS-164-UP. This is another slip joint with a pocket clip. This is a night morning design. M390 blade steel, and this is a very, very pokey blade indeed. This is really, really comfortable. You know, it's got a, uh, a little finger choil there you can choke up on. Uh, it's a little bit small for me because you do feel the, uh, the roundness right there. If it was a little flatter, it might be okay, but still very, very comfortable. Three finger grip on that. A little bit of an exposed uh, back spring on here. Like to see a pocket clip. It's just a little more convenient. And yeah, this thing uh, is pretty darn secure when it's uh, closed up there. Blade pull on there is uh, well, it's probably about like a six and a half or seven or something like that. But uh, the pivot is a little bit tight on there to uh, kind of uh, compensate just a little tiny bit for that. Okay, next up we have the Feng Tooth, and I have it in two different variations. This is the uh, the original one that I had. This is in shred carbon fiber and titanium bolsters on here. Well, bolster slash liners. And this one comes in S90V. And this was kind of my first... Uh, Kind of experiences going on with the S90V. I was kind of excited for that. And uh, this thing really does live up. This thing, uh, in particular, mine that I have here, the uh, the heat treat on that is mm, quite good. I've done cut tests on it and everything. Uh, I really do like um, the whole package on here. Um, we have that uh, kind of thing up front there that's basically the uh the fang tooth kind of name that it got there and then you have the blade pull out there and that one's not really used for deployment but just kind of helps with uh blade balance and all that sort of stuff this is a very comfortable all four finger grip and uh has a little bit of a groove there this thing was uh quite nice to be able to uh get in that pinch grip and uh, cut through a whole bunch of rope so there's that, and then we have the uh, Micarta variant, and this is an M390. Uh, this one I got much later on. The M390 in it, it's, it's pretty middle of the road, you know, nothing really bad to complain about, but it's not um, anywhere near a custom heat treat or anything like that. So there's that in particular. Uh, it's their kind of meh Carta, so, you know, keep that in mind. And this one has a much... Weaker back spring in general. Uh, still doesn't feel unsafe to me, but uh, still quite a bit uh, easier to uh, manipulate. Um, with uh, these sort of things, you can end up uh, tightening the pivot up on those, and that does help with uh, some of that stability there. So I'll probably end up doing that on this one. All right, next is the TS-188. I have taken this apart so I could uh, anodize those scales that kind of uh, bronzy color uh, because they are titanium. Super thick backs or uh, stock blade stock, that's the word. This is another Ho Yudong, and this is uh, an S90V. This is basically like a two and a half little finger knife here. Um, they made very, very small amounts of these with uh, Timascus here instead of uh, the carbon fiber, which would be kind of neat, but uh, yeah, I didn't see very many of them. Only like uh, maybe five or ten of them that I saw actually go up for sale. But uh, pretty interesting nonetheless. But uh, yeah, that geometry, it does come down to a very, very nice slicey sort of angle, but it comes up to basically an axe up top there. So yeah. Not exactly my favorite. Uh, this one has a pretty significant back lock on there. Um, pull is, uh, yeah, it's probably about an eight. Very nice walk and talk on it. Okay, we have the TS-189-SJ. I do believe that means slip joint. 
And uh, I refer to this as the finger guillotine. Uh, so this thing is pretty strange. We got a titanium uh, frames on there. We got a steel uh, back spring that um, basically uh, has the tension put there on the back and mounted back onto those scales. And because of that, this thing has an incredible amount of back, st back spring strength. Uh, I would um, call this basically, I would call it a 9 or a 9.5 on that. It does take uh, quite, amount, uh, quite a bit of um, effort and deliberation to actually get it open. Uh, this one is an M390. It's a long design. And uh, yep, yeah, we got basically that same kind of stone washy gray finish on the blade as we do on the uh, handles there. Once you do have this thing open, though, it's a uh, three-finger guy. And uh, you can kind of mount that on the back of your pinky there. Uh, really good blade geometry going on there. Um, really interesting clip that uh, happens very soon rather than uh, gradual on there. So you have a really nice, acute piercing tip that you can get going on there. But, yeah, trying to close it one-handed is... Um, Either not going to happen or possibly um, an anus clenching experience in case, uh, you know, you might slip and uh, do something uh, absolutely terrible. And so I pretty much always end up closing this two-handed. I can have basically that there. And then I can finish that the rest of the way. Kind of why I refer to this as the finger guillotine. Because uh, if you were to... Uh, close that thing wrong, you might lose a finger, or at least a, uh, a chunk of it. <laughs> okay, and the next one we got here, we have three of them. Uh, this is a TS-192. It's in carbon fiber, and then micarta here. This is a uh, Maz-1 Mokhtar design. 14C-28N, rather than uh, some of the higher-end blade steels that you've seen on virtually all the rest of these. Uh, very large and uh, four-finger grip going on here. Uh, very high sheep's foot sort of thing. Nice blade geometry and everything going on there. The, uh, the carbon fiber on these is quite nice. I really do appreciate those. And uh, the back springs are quite nice and strong on them. If you do have the uh, pocket space available, these things are fantastic users. But, yes, this is it in uh, carbon fiber in 14C28N. This is the, uh, the micarta variant in 14C28N. And uh, this one's back spring is a little bit weaker, but still very, very use, uh, useful and not dangerous. And then uh, I also did pick one of these up in um, M390. And I scratched the blade up a little bit. That's what happens when you... Uh, Playing around with a KME and you have uh, some newish stones that uh, haven't quite broken in. You can get a little bit of that uh, KME rash there, unfortunately. But, hey, don't particularly care because, uh, well, I use these. They're, they're not safe coins. So, there's that. Yeah, M390. Otherwise, absolutely the same as uh, this one right here. A knife so nice, I bought it thrice, I guess. <laughs> okay, we have the TS-197. This is a scrimshaw kind of thing. This one came with uh, some of it kind of wearing off on my particular version there. Um, at some point, I'd want to kind of figure out what type of um, stain or ink they end up using for some of these scrimshaw things. So I can kind of add that back in. Obviously, the grooves for it are still there. This has a matchstick pull to it. This is a Wong design, M390. Also has titanium liners. I kind of have it in some vibrant purple because I thought that would uh, be a nice contrast and kind of uh, mesh with uh, some of these scrimshaw designs that he's got going on there. It's a nice full four-finger grip uh, going on here. And uh, yeah, a little maybe Canadian camp knife almost maybe a little tiny bit of a nest muck sort of thing going on there but 
Very, very nice and useful blade shape, regardless. Um, and the M390 on this is uh, pretty middle of the road. Nothing uh, super crazy to write home about, but uh, it does hold an edge a uh, decently long time. So there's that. Pull on this guy is uh, probably around a six and a half to seven, somewhere right around there. Okay, this one is uh, quite interesting. As you can see, this is an in titanium integral. This is the TS-200. This is a rattlesnake design. It's an M390. Hey, it's got a nice pocket clip on there. Nice and comfortable in the hand. This is a uh, three finger sort of guy there, but you do have a uh, kind of large area with a finger choil. The blade doesn't fully reach up to it, so that is just a little tiny bit awkward, but this is still very, very nice and uh, comfortable. We have a decent, um, decent blade geometry going on there. Yeah, nice uh, sharpening choil sort of thing added in there. And we do have the uh, steel insert there on the titanium handle on this thing in particular. And this has a very nice back spring tension. Uh, very nice to uh, play around with. However, it doesn't, because of its uh, integral nature, uh, it doesn't have a stop pin on the inside. So when it's closed, you can kind of squeeze that or whatnot. It takes quite a bit to be able to make contact with the titanium in the back there. But if it is in the bottom of your pocket or something like that, and you're playing around and squeezing it, yeah, you can probably get a little bit of blade wrap. But that doesn't happen on a, a standard close. So that's just more of a user error sort of thing going on there. Okay. Next up, TS-206. This is also a uh, rattlesnake design. This is the Tonto variant, but they also do a drop point variant and they do this in orange G10 and they do this in camo G10. <laughs> so a lot of different variants of it. 14C28N on this thing in particular here. Um, back spring on there, it's maybe about a five and a half. Um, you know, the blade pull is uh, definitely there and uh, able for you to do that, but you have a hard time actually getting it on both fingers because you have other tools in the way there. Uh, those other tools are a wood saw. We have a uh, largish pair of scissors with the uh, the winger style um, spring clip on there rather than um, that little uh, coiled thing that uh, Swiss Army or uh, Victorinox ends up using. And we have on the back here an awl that will basically tear your fingernail straight off if you try to pull that out because the uh, the uh, back spring tension on that, because it's half uh, shared with those scissors and everything, is, I don't know, a 15 out of 10. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, when I got the picture for that uh, and had all the tools open, I actually used a pair of pliers to pull that out because I could not do it physically with my hand. Kind of shows you uh, that bit of a design flaw there. Okay, anyway, moving on, we have the TS-221. This is a Jelly Jerry design. And uh, yeah, I like this thing quite a bit. Uh, we have a titanium milled pocket clip anchored in two spots, and you're able to uh, swap that over to the other side. Might not be exactly the um, most trivial thing, because those two uh, screws there that are holding that pocket clip on also provide all of the tension for the back spring on this. So uh, you can do it, but uh, might not be the absolute easiest thing in the known universe to do. This one has a uh, fuller that goes all the way there with uh, three holes in there. This is M390 blade steel. Has a uh, decent blade geometry. And um, yeah, this one's probably a 7, 7.5 for uh, back spring strength and all that sort of stuff. I've liked this thing enough that, uh, well, I've purchased another one. 
But uh, yeah, they did change this a little bit. This is a TS-221-CF up. And this is what Tucson has done to it after Jelly Jerry finished his design. Uh, he didn't have anything in particular to do with um, the updates that they did here. Uh, that being changing that fuller and adding some more uh, holes in there. He's actually not a huge fan of it. Um, for me, you know, I, I do kind of prefer the look of the original. But this also doesn't bother me. Uh, it's also still in M390. And hey, I've even purchased another one of these and uh, gave it to my mother. Because, uh, well, she was talking about trying to learn to uh, sharpen some knives. She had like an old timer or something like that. And I figured, well, how about if I go ahead and get you something a little more upscale that's uh, convenient? I think she has it clipped in her purse or whatnot. But yeah, this one, back spring, still super nice on there. This one's just a little tiny bit stronger than the other one. So there is tray one. Tray two doesn't have quite as many from Tucson. But that is perfectly okay. We have the TS-233. This is a night morning design here. I do like that it has a bit thinner blade stock on here. This is about two and a half millimeter rather than the uh, 3.2 to 3.5 that they do on a lot of others. Uh, also has titanium liners that I've um, anodized, a little more Easter bluish. This is natural bone. Looks like uh, this one has a, quite a bit of a rolled edge I need to uh, deal with on that one. This one's pretty nice, but... Um, it is known for having quite a weak back spring. Uh, this is probably about a four, three and a half or four for that. Um, still not, you know, super dangerous or whatnot because it will still snap back. But uh, still, yeah, much lighter of a back spring than probably a lot of people would prefer. Okay, these aren't quite slip joints, but they don't lock. This is TS241-CF. Kerchunk. This is a uh, YX or Jan Janadu design. This one's in uh, S90V. And uh, while not being the worst version of S90V I've got from Tucson, this one's still fairly early on where they were kind of figuring out that whole uh, tempering of this particular steel. Well, this is a uh, double detent with a uh, top flipper, so fairly fun to uh, fidget around with. And then much later on, they came out with this one. This is a TS-244, also by Jan Janadu. Handles a little bit different there, and we have a uh, full Warncliffe-style blade, and it's an M390. And this one does a pretty darn good job of being M390. Still just as fun to uh, play around with. These guys are quite light because they just have a little, uh, little steel liners in there to uh, hold the double detents in, and otherwise you just got that carbon fiber. Okay, the TS246. This is the TS246-DA-Horn, technically, I suppose. Because this one is using um, uh, their version of Damascus steel of some sort. Uh, this one in particular, I have uh, some lighter spots there. Um, that was basically, there was some uh, oil still left on the blade. It wasn't quite clean enough when they uh, put it in the etchant. So uh, those didn't get etched quite as much as the others. So they're just a little bit stained. That's fine. This one has that uh, natural horn on there. Um, this one in particular, almost completely transparent on both sides. So not much um, horn bark or anything going on there. And uh, this one d has a little bit of fit and finish problems due to uh, the uh, the gluing um, and drilling and whatnot. But I've this one kind of has that, but none of the others really that I've seen have any of that problem. So there's that. They also do make this in uh, bone and Damascus steel, as well as uh, S90V. So if you do like the uh, 
higher end blade steel, then there you go on that. Okay, and then we have these interesting guys here. This is the TS-252. This is one of the uh, the earlier ones here. This is in... Yeah, we got brass bolsters sort of things, snake wood handle on there. And this is using their uh, older style Damascus, just like uh, that last one that I looked at there. It um, actually does, in person, still kind of look a little green and purplish like it does on camera. That's a little strange. These ones have the problem of uh, they don't have an internal blade stop. So depending on um, the exact strength and whatnot, uh, when you close it, you can see if it focuses that uh, it can blade wrap on you, unfortunately. That's just kind of the way that is. Um, not super great, but uh, it really depends on uh, exactly how you end up closing it. If you uh, use your fingers to close it rather than uh, just snapping it in there, you generally don't have that problem. So this one is also a TS-252. This is in uh, Oxhorn and Damascus. And uh, this one is using kind of their newer style of Damascus. This is um, a little bit different. Uh, this isn't just a uh, Damascus laminate kind of thing. It's uh, actually a bit more uh, going on to it. Uh, a lot more texture going on, obviously, to it. Um, this isn't quite just, um, you know, layered and then etched. It, it is different uh, steels and whatnot going on there. What those steels are? Don't know. It could be 9CR18 MOV. It could be 13CR MOV. Uh, it could be VG10. I don't know. Uh, they haven't really mentioned that to uh, anybody. So I suppose keep that in mind. There we go. We have the TS-254. This is another rattlesnake design that's a titanium integral. Uh, this one is quite a bit different in that you see that uh, instead of having the uh, steel insert just on the end there, the whole back spring is basically a uh, steel piece that they've uh, screwed on in uh, three anchor points there. And uh, this one seems to have quite the same blade shape as this guy. Yep, there you go. So this is just kind of the uh, the fancier uh, integral kind of version of that. As it's an integral, um, you don't have uh, a blade stop pin in there. And this one, the, uh, the back spring is actually really easy to uh, have the blade wrap on there. So that's a little unfortunate, but this does have a decent M390 blade on there, so it uh, doesn't run into uh, nearly as much blade rolling as would uh, as you'd end up with with a lot of others that uh, also have that blade wrap kind of issue here. This one is super interesting. It's a TS-256. This is a night morning design. We got the little blade pull here. Fairly funky little uh, humpy and curvy kind of shape to it. And what's special about this is it's in uh, Bowler M398 rather than uh, 390. Thus far, this is the only knife that uh, they've made with the stuff. Uh, essentially, what uh, M398 is supposed to do is uh, reduce the toughness a little bit to try to get you just a little bit more uh, edge retention than M390. So... Yeah, I mean, it, it still really depends on the exact heat treat, but this is going to have a bit less toughness. So probably you really shouldn't open like paint cans or uh, pry with a, a knife and especially not a slip joint. But yeah, I probably wouldn't do that with this. But otherwise, yeah, this thing is uh, pretty nice and phenomenal. Nice three finger grip, very neutral handle. Uh, I really do like the... Uh, the styling that's going on there. Um, the blade with the little curve on there, it does make it a little tricky to uh, try and sharpen. But uh, once you do, this thing is uh, quite a nice knife. The uh, blade pull on this one, probably about a five and a half. It's not uh, super duper strong. 
But hey, it's got a blade stop pin, so you don't have to worry about closing it and uh, having any blade wrap. Uh, we also have this guy here. This is the TS257 G10, but they haven't made any other variants of it. Uh, this is a phenomenal little folder here. It's a long design M390, very comfortable three finger. Also super nice and thin blade stock with that nice tall saber grind on there. This thing is a slicing juggernaut. And the M390 does a pretty darn good job on this thing here. <laughs> this is um, actually one that I liked a lot and uh, found a second one that uh, was also within my price range. So I have a brand new one <laughs> as well. Um, not sure if uh, it will end up going to somebody or not or if I'll just keep it myself. But uh, I really just... Couldn't help but pick it up because I really, really do like this thing. Really nice back spring strength on it as well. 7.5. Leaning towards maybe 8 or something like that. Super nice and thin. This is, yeah, that's, that's a fantastic knife right there. Sticking with one, we got the TS-315. And this has... Uh, some interesting kind of uh, things on the front here. This actually is just gold anodized titanium. I was wrong in my original review of it where I mentioned that it was probably brass, but it's not. I did, however, take it apart, and this is a full plate that has this stuff kind of uh, milled out of it and then uh, mounted on the inside there. So this has like four layers of uh, titanium, or technically five, I guess, to <laughs> right there. It's got a pocket clip on there. Nice matchstick pole, fairly thin blade stock, and it's got a bit of a trailing point to it, um, which might not be absolutely everybody's cup of tea for some EDC sort of tasks, but apparently pretty helpful for um, some wood carving tasks and things like that. Uh, this thing is uh, really, really nice and comfortable for a, a full four finger hammer grip if you're up there. Or a nice, relaxed uh, three-finger grip back there. Either way, the pocket clip doesn't get in the way and kind of keeps that uh, kind of kinked sort of design going on there. Uh, and the M390 on this one in particular does a pretty good job. So uh, I really, really do like this one quite a bit. Uh, really nice and pretty. But... Uh, you know, I, I suppose a lot of stuff that uh, Wong ends up doing uh, ends up that way. He he does have his way around um, uh, uh, aesthetics and whatnot. You know, he does post uh, some artwork and some other things and whatnot on his uh, Instagram. And yeah, it's uh, usually nice and serene and whatnot. Okay, we have the TS-335. This is in uh, 14C28N and kind of burlapish micarta. This is another YX design, or Jan Janadu. And uh, it's also another double detent folder here. It does have a large flipper tab, so trying to close it, uh, it can actually get the back of your finger there instead of uh, fully closing. So you do have to uh, get just a little tiny bit used to it. But out of all of their uh, double detent folders, I really do uh, prefer this one. Just, the yeah, the blade shape is pretty great. Um, you know, the finger choil is probably just a little bit small for my fingers. But, um, yeah, it just works out great. Uh, titanium liners on there. And then, of course, the uh, steel uh, double detents going on there. But they also have this in M390 and carbon fiber. And this would be probably the one that I would uh, recommend not necessarily specifically for the blade steel, but I do prefer their carbon fiber a lot more than uh, their micarta in general. That and this one uh, seems to hold on just a little bit more than the uh, micarta one does. All right, and last but not least here, we have the TS-359 in Damascus. This is very similar to the 252s. It's using that newer style um, 
Damascus there, and you can see we have a uh, core that, uh, yeah, you can see that that's going all the way down the spine there. So this one is a little bit more of a laminate sort of thing. Uh, these ones have ebony wood handles on them. Uh, it probably does take quite a bit of light to be able to actually see that, but uh, it is. Um, they've also used uh, their ebony wood on uh, some kitchen knife handles and whatnot as well. So there's definitely that. Um, this one, however, even though it's been made much more recently than these, has the same exact freaking problem with that little brass thing there because it doesn't have a blade stop on there. So it can get to that and kind of uh, mar the, the uh, tip of your blade up if you uh, snap it closed. So on this one, yep, just like those, I would suggest probably just closing it with your fingers and you won't run into that. Otherwise, it is just a little bit bigger, but very, very similar. So, yeah, that seems to be all of the slip joints and everything that I have from them. These are uh, other various slip joints that I have. We got the uh, Cold Steel Lucky One, the uh, Concept. Uh, it's not the wedge because it uh, doesn't have the uh, lock back on there. The bevy. Okay, yeah. That's in, uh, what, S35VN and uh, shredded carbon fiber. We got the Real Steel Luna and the uh, Stormtrooper vibe from uh, uh, Knife Center. I got my uh, case and synthetic bone. This is a small stockman. Uh, not a huge fan of it, but uh, eh, I got it for peeling oranges, and it kind of does that, but... Uh, that's all right. We also have the uh, three spider codes here. We got the grasshopper, the honeybee, and the bug. And then we got uh, the range buster uh, from Boker Magnum and some snake wood. And uh, some of that uh, laminated uh, Damascus sort of stuff going on there with some uh, brass liners. And then we got some uh, brother knives here. We got the... Uh, 1508 Warren Cliff with carbon fiber and VG10. Uh, this is the uh, 1510. It's also in VG10. This is in uh, canvas micarta. This is 1511 in VG10 and uh, carbon fiber with uh, G10 liners. And this one's actually a lockback. Uh, this is the Sunfish. It's in VG10. Uh, it's a wonton design. It's a 1503 and apparently it's number 2087. This thing's pretty cool, but, uh, hey, it's a lock and knife. But, okay, so that brings me through all of my slip joints here. So, oh, I suppose there is one other slip joint that uh, I have that I didn't uh, mention. It's not a Tucson, though. It's the uh, Artisan Cutlery Biome. Dylan Mallory design, 12C27, or as um, they like to refer to it as, 12C27N, um, which is just incorrect, and uh, they just don't really want to fix it, I guess. <laughs> but that's okay, whatever. Uh, all right, so, yeah, that's uh, basically what I have going on for my Tucson collection. Uh, I have talked... In the past, about all of my pens, and uh, that really hasn't changed because I haven't picked up any others, so I don't really need to go over that. Um, and I've also gone over the flashlights. So, yes, there was also another category that they had made, uh, but obviously it was a fad, it was the fidget spinners. Um, I don't have any of them. Um, at some point, hopefully I might be able to find somebody who uh, did have some that uh, they're willing to get rid of or whatnot, because I am a little bit interested in them, just for the uh, the engineering and whatnot that goes into them. But uh, yeah, that's my uh, Tucson collection, at least here towards the end of 2021. 
Uh, like I said, I still have like another eight or so that are coming on the way. So, uh, yep, my collection grows further. But at the time of uh, making this, that's everything I got. So, all right. That was a, that was a long jaunt through all of that. But as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.